Hello everyone, welcome to my unit channel. In my previous video, we have talked about how to use Unity to create the countdown timer. In the end of that video, I have promised to publish another video to show different ways to display the timer. In this video, we will have a look at how to use Unity build one countdown clock. Ok, let's get started. First, just open up the Unity and currently we have nothing in here. I'm using Unity 2018.3 for this video and this is just a regular 2D project. Then drag some sprites into your project. I will also link all of the assets we are using in this video in the description, so you can grab them if you want to use them. As I mentioned in my previous episode, for the sprite editor work, we need to make sure to set the texture type to sprite 2D and UI. Then, in this case, we need to choose to the multiple mode. After opening the sprite editor, you can simply press the grid by cell count to separate the elements within one image. This image already has been laid out in a regular pattern during Photoshop creation. For another sprite, we just use the fast way to auto slice it. Don't worry too much about the isolate image size, we can change it later in scene view. Back to Unity, let's set up the UI canvas. Before we create UI image, we are going to make change to our canvas scalar script that is one part of our canvas. Here we got constant pixel size. In today, there are multiple different resolutions. So that's on our side. We want to make sure that we are designing for a resolution that is independent of the size that the elements are. So what we do is we just change this to scale with screen size. And then it's going to ask us for a reference resolution. In here, it depends on your screen size. You can choose 800 plus 600 or 1280 plus 720. Just make sure the screen size should correspond to 16 divided by 9 as bat ratio. Okay, let's create our first UI image and we call it clock frame. Change its size and place it to the center of the canvas. Then, select our clock frame UI image. Hold Command D or Ctrl D to duplicate this image. Drag the Greek cycle sprites to the source image position and change its UI order. We want our Greek cycle UI image stays on the bottom of our clock. If you don't understand the reason why I drag the second UI image to the top of the first UI image, I have simulated one image for you to easily understand. As I mentioned, this image only display for your understanding. All UI images in this project should stay on the same axis. Holding Command D or Ctrl D to try to duplicate the UI image again, and drag the pink cycle sprites to the source image. This UI image work as our clock background panel which can display the portion of our max time. For example, if our game time is 15 minutes, our image should look like this. If our game is fast speed level and we design to 55 or 15 minutes limited, the clock should look like this. Up to now we have made 3 UI images. We are only use the middle image in our script. The frame image and the background gray cycle image provide a nice graphic for our project. If they makes you a little confused, you can delete these two images. Both of them will not influence our final result. Create another two UI images which stands for our two hands. One of them is called max time hand, which will point the max time in our clock. The other's name is current time hand. Then you can change their size to make them easy to manipulate. Pay attention to here. We need to change to the pivot mode and drag the pivot point to almost the bottom places. Changing their pivot point now lets these two images rotate around the pivot point instead of the default center point of these images.
Back to click our clock background UI image, we will notice that we have almost forgot to change the image type from simple type to field type. Field image will display a section of the sprites with the rest of the rack transform left transparent. Additional, adding the outline components determines the stroke width of our images. This step is optional, just makes your clock look nice. The other setting we don't really have to worry about. Now, it's time for coding. Inside the Visual Studio, the first thing to do is go up here and say using Unity Engine.UI. Remember, whenever we code something related with the UI canvas, we have to use the Unity UI namespace. Then create some variables before we start doing anything else, because actually we are going to use those. We need our clock background image. We need max time hand and the current time hand. Also, we want to set our game time as public, so that we can adjust the game time on inspector view. In awake methods, we want to initialize the background image according to our game time variable. Be attention to here. The range of the fill amount is from the 0 to 1. So the variable type should be float type instead of the integer type variables. Then we create one integer type variable called max time angle, which can calculate the angle between the start point to the current angle. If the game time is zero, the max time angle should be zero as well. If the game time is 30 minutes, the angle should be half. If the game time is 45 minutes, the angle should be 270 degrees. Then use the transform Euler angles to display on the canvas. Transform.Euler angles lets the game object rotate as Euler angles in degrees. In here, let's deep explain of our awake methods. We have declared our pink cycle image as clock background image as public. If our game time is 15 minutes, we want our background image display the corresponding part in the game. So how to connect our UI image to our variables is the biggest problem. Here we can assign the number to the image fill amount. Remember, we have set our UI image as fill type now, where the range of fill amount is from 0 to 1. Only float type variables can be converted to this line. This is the reason why we have to use casting type to change our game time to float type. The whole page is to explain how to make our pink cycle background display in the right way. Then we have to explain how to make our max time hand image rotate on the correct place. We set our max game time default number is 60. And we know one cycle is 360 degrees. So if we have 15 minutes game time, which means our max time hand image rotates 50 multiplied by 360 divided by 60 degrees. We can easily to calculate x equals game time multiplied by 360 and then divide it by 60. After we got the max time angle in the awake methods, we can use these variables to change the UI rotation. Back to Unity, right click on the hierarchy, click on create empty, and we are going to call this clock. This one is going to be the game object that is going to hold our script. Drag our UI references to the correct place. If our game max time is set to 15 minutes, when we enter the play mode, we can see something looks like this. We can change our game time different number to test whether our awake methods work or not. For convenience, add a range decoration above your variable in your script, and you can instantly turn your public variable into a slider.
The next step, we are going to update methods, which is going to get called 60 times per frame. In here, let's introduce one new default variable, time.realTimeSyncStartup. Time.realTimeSyncStartup is the real time in seconds since the game started. In almost all cases, you can use time.time .time instead. In update methods, looks like the same routine as our awake methods. We create our current time angle and let it rotate its pivot point per second. Each second, the game object should rotate 360 divided by 60 degree. Then, using transform.euro angle to rotate our game object as euro angles in degrees. In here, we can debug.log the current time angle each frame to show whether our update method is correct or not. We can see each frame our current time angle is increasing step by step. If we try to stop the game, we can see our current time UI image has stopped almost 90 degrees on the console view. It looks like we have completed the second hand image work. Then we can add some additional functions inside of a script. We are creating one function called alert. This function allows the clock to highlight when there is not enough time left. If our current time less than 10 minutes, our background color and our current time hand should turn to red color. The current time type is game object, so that if we want to access their color, we have to use get component image. While our clock background type is UI image, we can directly change its color by dot color. In here, we use vector 4 to assign to a new color. The first three parameters are red, green, and blue. The fourth parameter is the alpha, which stands for transparency or opacity. Because our max time hand color is default black, it's hard to check whether our code is work or not. But in play mode, you can click on max hand to see the clock detail. It should work. Finally, we create check game function, which makes this script looks complete. Then, don't forget to call this function inside the update methods. If you want to realize the timer looks like Monster Hunter timer, you can change here to 3600 to complete this timer. The reason I set 60 only for the tutorial can see the result easily. Thanks for watching this video. Now we have learned two different timer in Unity. If you want to learn more topics about timer, leave the comments and let me know. I have attached my previous tutorial countdown timer on the end of this video. In the next episode, we are going to create one card rotation in our project. All resources are available on my GitHub, so feel free and go ahead and check them out for yourself. The demo project will be uploaded to my Google Drive. The text version of this tutorial has been set as public on my Evernote website. Some Unity API also links below. All detailed information you can find by the description box. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I really hope this channel helps to save your time. If you like it, hope to smash the likes and subscribe button. Alright, see you in the next time.